Whew. <laughs> made it in the nick of time. Hello everybody and welcome to the final day of Eat with Sandhya. Well, I hope this is not the last time we talk about food, but in our series of 10 days of 10 meals and 10 lessons around food. I've so enjoyed the process of sharing my meals with um, what I know are people that, that are like-minded or and you know it's, it's, it's a wonderful feeling when you are around somebody so we know from behavioral science that that for example if you're completely alone and you're standing uh, at the foot of a mountain for example and somebody asks you to rate the difficulty of the mountain you would probably rate it like an 8 on 10 or something have somebody with you they're not going to carry your bag for you or, or, or drag you up the mountain but just doing it with a friend or, or a you know, somebody, somebody who's on this path with you can make the perception of the difficulty of the mountain seem far lower. And that's the beauty of company. If there's one thing that we know will be a game changer for us in the future, um, um, all other things being equal, our sense of loneliness, our sense of social isolation will have devastating consequences for us. So. I will say that food is a great way to build bonds with people and let's lean into that beauty and, and that wondrous aspect of food and, and make that work for us besides it nourishing us um, and, and making us feel and making us feel well from the inside because food really can be medicine. Uh, Hippocrates is uh, one of his famous quotes is around food being medicine and if you think about it most of the medicines that we have derived are from plant-based sources or from natural sources right so why not make our food uh, be be about making us feel well truly and truly happy from the inside so to recap today there was no um, agenda as such except for me to answer some of the questions that have come in uh, over the course of this week but also really for this to be a celebration around food I just wanted to recap some of the ideas that we've been talking about over the last 10 days which is that before you, if you're confused about food, go down to some of the basics, right? And some of the basics are, where are you at today? All right, what is your fitness like today? And, and one thing that I did promise was, was how do you measure fitness? Okay. Now, if you see, I don't have any fancy tracking device or, or anything on my phone that measures fitness. Literally, the metrics of fitness can be quite intuitive. Um, I will show you right here. You have a beautiful device right here to measure your fitness, right? If your clothes seem, if your clothes are starting to get even slightly tight for you, you know something's going on with your body. Your body is constantly giving you these signals. We just choose to ignore them, right? So I know that over the course of last week, things have been a little disruptive. I can feel myself just feeling a little maybe bloated or I can feel like the, the waistband of, and now the problem is modern clothing one we're sizing up more and more and on this and on the other hand everything is elasticated around the waist so please be uh, please be a little strict with how you choose your measuring instrument a pair of formal pants for example or a skirt with a waistband that does not stretch is a great metric and that's pretty much all you need not to judge yourself or to berate yourself for your lack of progress or or you know not to create stretch goals of you know i was once upon a time a 26 waist and now i'm a 34 and i you know i hope to get there in three months these are the kind of these are the kind of goals for which many of the aspects of which are outside of our control so what we can do is say you know what i was this six months ago where am I at now? And how can I work myself back to just where I was six months ago, perhaps, right? Um, weight loss is certainly not linear. Not all health is about weight loss for sure. There are many people who can appear very slim. We have something called skinny fat, which is, uh, which is, which is where people appear to be really, really thin, but are carrying a lot of visceral fat or fat around their organs. I will say some of the, some of the, kind of alarm, um, some of the kind of statements that do alarm me are the people who say that, you know, I can eat anything and, and, and nothing happens to me and I can work it off. Rule of thumb, you rarely can out exercise a bad diet, especially as you get older. The people who make statements like this, it's very easy. It's it, from, I mean, from the outside, it looks like they have it all, but we have no idea what's really going on inside of them and with their lifestyle. Usually these are people that are pretty conscious about what they're eating. And even if you see them eating like a big piece of dessert or something like that, like my uncle will do every one. 
oops, sorry, running low on battery there. <laughs> I've been going back to back today. Um, if my uncle eats a piece of dessert, like he'll eat a large piece of cake, not probably the best for him at his age, but, but he will just not eat anything for the whole day. Now that's just a choice that he makes and he probably does this once in three months. What our brain will do is say, oh my God, he does that so I can do it once a week. All right. So don't go by anecdote. Don't go by alarmist stories. Don't go by 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 um, eye catching headlines or or this is the next big trend. What seems to be evidence based is rather unspectacular. Those rules haven't changed in a long time. And and, and that we are understanding more as each year and each decade passes. But some of the rules that stay basic are that if you need to go into a calorie surplus, you need to consume more calories than you're burning. If you need to go into a calorie deficit, you need to, you need to consume fewer calories than you're burning, right? It's basic math and that is the golden rule of, um, if there's one rule about eating, it would be that. The second is your macros. Getting your macros in is important. Proteins, carbs, and fats. And, and as much as any fat diet will tell you that that can be survived without carbohydrates, yes. But are the long-term effects of no-carb diet healthy, sustainable, good for other aspects of our health and wellness, including our mental health wellness? It doesn't seem to be. It doesn't seem to be good for us at all. So macros will come from balancing your plate into the uh, into the quarters that we talked about. The micronutrients is is a complete. It's still a lot of it is a mystery to us. The one sure way that we know that we can get most of it in is by eating the rainbow, a wide variety of fruit, vegetables, pulses, legumes, uh, cereals. Okay, can't go wrong with that. Where we need to start getting more careful is when we're eating a lot of processed foods. Okay, that's when you might need to start tracking. That's when you might need to restrict the number of hours in which you eat or, or you know, counting, counting how much these might because we are concentrating food uh, artificially and, and making it making maybe the volume small or dehydrating it, concentrating calories. It's hitting the bliss point in our brains, all of which make, make it very easy for us to go off balance on our diets. Um, I wanted to address a few questions that, that did come up. There, some of them are uh, uh, completely out of the blue. Uh, what should we? What should I be drinking? Okay. Uh, again, I've already said juices. We're taking away a large part of the goodness and also circumventing the digestive process. The simplest drinks, when in doubt, tea, coffee, preferably without sugar. If you do add milk small quantities of it, as low fat as you can, depending on whether your calorie deficit, calorie uh, uh, surplus, or add like a plant-based milk, which is, which is widely available, easy to make at home these days. But again, that added sugar, remember that it's concentrated calories and any kind of added sugar, whether it's jaggery, honey, cane sugar, coconut sugar, it's all sugar at the end of the day. Sugar-free creates lot of imbalances, including in our mind, in our association with sweet. Uh, these artificial sweeteners are usually very, very sweet and, and actually make our brain highly attuned to that sugar hit. And, and we start to look for that and we start to become, we're as addicted to that. What, what we are is addicted to that sort of uh, uh, taste. And, and that's, that's, that's what we're going to try and seek out then, especially when our executive function is low. So willpower, not a great way to create sustainable health and wellness habits. Instead, it's about making, it's about bringing mindfulness to food, looking for deeper enjoyment around food. Um, should I have smoothie? So, so tea, coffee, water are your safest drinks. Okay. Uh, should I have smoothies? Again, th there is a, a there's no there's no right or wrong answer it depends on where you are in your life if first preference eat your vegetables all right um if you're in if you're convalescing from an illness or if you're low on time or if you really dislike eating your vegetables a smoothie is a great way of mix blitzing it all in and and also you know mixing in maybe like something that's bitter in taste with something that's a little sweeter but keep in mind that the more we're messing and processing our food the harder it becomes to get a sense of satiety of how much we are consuming how fast we're consuming so 
a lot of the smoothies that I see are laden with like seeds and peanut butter and dried fruit, some of which might be might be sweetened, fresh fruit and then vegetables. So it's a lot of calories that we might be consuming. Uh, just be aware, as aware as you are, but you can rarely go wrong eating the vegetable itself, right? Whole, as whole as you possibly can. It can be lightly cooked. Not everything needs to be eaten raw. Um, so rule of thumb, go with your rules of thumb always. And like I said, pick the next best. But if you absolutely abhor vegetables, I'd say rather have a smoothie than not have any vegetables in your diet because you'll, you'll miss the rules of the macros and the micros, right? Which are the, which are the only two rules that we really need for nourishing ourselves. Caffeine, is it, is it bad for us? I see a lot of people uh, saying that they're giving up caffeine and, and uh, you know, uh, um, feeling really good about it. So caffeine is a stimulant. We didn't actually discuss supplements, but, but of the stimulants, of the workout enhancers, of the focus enhancers, caffeine is definitely a stimulant, but by and large, in most cases, relatively harmless, right? So we humans have been consuming drugs from time immemorial, from the first cocoa bean that we swallowed to the first fermented foods. Uh, similarly, caffeine is also a drug, but in small quantities, it can be a drug that, that, that can be quite useful. It could enhance performance, it can enhance focus. But again, the rule of thumb is it shouldn't come at the cost of what you really need, which is nourishment, which is good sleep. So if every day you need caffeine to wake yourself up, please ask yourself if you're getting enough sleep. Okay? So that's how you kind of balance these questions out. Uh, should I eat? I don't like foods eaten from the fridge, frozen foods, not me personally. This was the question that came in. Frozen foods are a, again, there are no, there's nothing that's completely uh, demonic and there's nothing that's absolutely glorious either. So we need to think about, uh, would you like to be eating local? Yes, for sure. But sometimes flash frozen vegetables, for example. So what we might call, what we might call fresh vegetables may sometimes be harvested like four or five or 10 days previously has been gone through multiple transport, cleaning this, that, stocking, and, and finally reaches your plate, right? Compared to flash frozen vegetables, which are um, harvested at ripeness and are cleaned and, and cut and flash frozen, like instantly frozen, they will actually retain a lot more of their nutrient value than something that appears fresh, but has actually been ripened over several weeks and in transit and perhaps could have a lot more nutrient loss. So for a lot of our notions about like, I don't eat fridge ka, fridge ka khana, food from the fridge, you need to ask yourself again, when you make a particular choice, don't think of it as a reality and ask yourself when you make that choice, what is it that you're saying no to? So if, if you're saying that I don't want to eat anything out of the fridge, that means that you need to be prepared to, pre you need to be able to make the time to prepare your food fresh for every meal, or the alternative will be you'll be eating dehydrated foods like like packaged noodles or, or energy bars. So take your pick, weigh your pros and cons and, and, and pick based on your goals and what actually truly contributes to health. Um, probiotics. OK, I got a question about probiotics and prebiotics. What should I be having? Okay, this is going to sound pretty controversial, but if you're hearing about probiotics and prebiotics like every article magazine newspaper uh, um and 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 uh, influencers talking about it i'll say take take it with a little bit of pinch of salt unfortunately while while there are some studies while there are some anecdotal evidence then there are studies as well that do show the beneficial of effects of probiotics what these probiotics are how they work in our gut how they work with other aspects and other systems other foods we don't truly have have an idea of so when in doubt do you want to have some fermented foods by all means go ahead do that you know should you be buying expensive probiotics i've actually been prescribed a tablet that was 100 rupees a tablet okay for for lactobacillus which occurs in in many foods and lactobacillus is just one there are like 100 different kinds of probiotics if not more prebiotics so if it's if it seems like like the next new miracle food, I'll say take it with a little bit of pinch of salt. That said, if you have been prescribed that by a doctor and you are taking the advice of the doctor, please don't let any information by somebody like me or any other kind of influencer supplement or come in the place of medical information. 
should I be eating for my blood type? Uh, sadly, that has been completely debunked. There is no correlation, just the rules of your macros. You need to get your macros in, get your micros in, make sure you're on a calorie balance. Okay, that, that golden rule uh, does, does stay throughout. Um, and there was one more which I knew I, I should be getting to. Mm. Okay, what do I do for cravings was the one I wanted to address as well today. Um, rule of cravings, what is your craving? The craving is really your brain, your amygdala, your very primitive brain, sending you a signal called, I want, I want, I want, alarm, alarm, sandhya, 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 sandhya. But what is it screaming exactly, right? A great rule of thumb when you have a craving. Now, the amygdala is your unthinking part of your brain, all right? It's the seat of feeding, feeling, uh, fight, flight, freeze, and fornicating, right? Now, all of these can be run through the filter of our thinking brain, except when you legitimately are faced with a tiger or a, or a car hurtling towards you, in which case you should just react, right? And your brain will do that beautifully without any practice. At any other time, it's worth just pausing and run it through the filter of your thinking brain. Okay? So when I hear Sandhya, 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 the first question I ask myself is, uh, Sandhya, are you really hungry? Can I serve you some more of leftover lunch? You know, the Rajma Chawal that you had for lunch? And my brain's like, mm. and then I know I'm not hungry, I'm just bored or I'm just stressed and I'm looking for something which is a, to get that dopamine hit, right? That's when I go reach out for all my, all the fun foods or the high fat, high crunch, high salt, high sugar foods. So rule, rule of thumb is ask yourself the question. One, two, most cravings will pass within 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so what do you do instead? Walk about, listen to some music, drink a glass of water, uh, do, you know, read a book, watch a show, something that's a little enjoyable, but is not, but that one that your body doesn't have to pay the price for, hopefully. If that craving still exists even after that, if it's crunch that you want, maybe try like some crunchy cucumber. I'm not saying it's going to be the, the thing that you want, but if it's cucumber and salt, sometimes I'll do cucumber with like a piece of olive on it. I've got the salt, I've got the crunch. And, and some of my, that, that animal part of my brain does get appeased. Uh, if, it's, if it's a craving that lasts even longer, there's a lovely idea from Zen that, that wait for the person to knock three times before you open the door, right? So use that maybe for your cravings as well. And if it's really that strong a craving, go ahead and get yourself something, but, but consume as mindfully. And that's where we talked about, you know, get things which are good quality. If it's chocolate you're craving, when you buy a really expensive bar of chocolate, trust me, most of us will not be able to consume it all in one go, just for the amount of money we've spent on it, right? That one piece placed on your tongue with no distractions will give us 80 to 90% of the satisfaction that we were craving and then comes the law of diminishing marginal utility. If all else fails and you find yourself simply unable to control, look at the rest of your life as well, what you are struggling with, get professional help. It exists, these professionals exist for a reason and do not do not berate yourself just because it's not happening in for you in one month, two months, six months or even six years. Think of it as this way. Uh, one of the learnings I had from, from, from a teacher was that and I, I had a lot of anger issues. And I said, you know, I've been doing all of these things to try and get rid of my anger. And I get so frustrated getting angry with myself <laughs> that I'm still not able to overcome my anger. And the teacher had something beautiful to say, which is maybe not the most scientific, but it gave me so much solace. And, and they said that, look, some of our, some of our suffering is, has come down from our ancestors. You know, and we're looking at we're looking at potentially several lifetimes of that suffering that we might have inherited. And we expect that in one week, everything should be just fine. Instead, let us be patient with ourselves. It's slow progress is progress. A 0.5% shift in thinking is progress as well, right? It looks very different for different people. And, and just because somebody is telling you that, hey, I lost, I lost 10 kgs in you know, three months or whatever, it doesn't mean that we have no idea what their reality is. We have no idea what the rest of their life looks like. Far more important to do self-analysis, create realistic goals for us, use the behavioral hacks that help us. Some of the easy behavioral hacks that I wanna share with you today are one is get a buddy, you know, when, like I said, when you're standing at the base of that mountain with a buddy, things are going to seem a lot less difficult. One, two, 
create these goals actually make your goals i don't know if you ever heard about smart goals in the workplace make your goals specific measurable attainable what is the t timely i think um r is r is uh, um, okay, sorry the hunger is probably kicking in um reachable no no it's something else and t please google smart goals i'm so sorry i wasn't planning to talk about that but but make the more specific your goals the more you like write it down the more you tell people who won't judge you the more you create accountability outside of yourself the better your chances of for 3 to 6 months gamification works okay uh if you want to do like something little harsher stress stretch goals keep in mind these are very effortful gamification and and external accountability will work for that in the long term try and make your goals just sustainable they don't necessarily need to be hugely enjoyable but where it's not you can do what we call temptation bundling all right so for example you don't particularly like going to the gym or don't like exercising as i don't ever uh so i bundle it with something that i do enjoy i love listening to music so that's my time to listen to my music or i like to be surrounded by people that are also on a fitness goal so i actually go into the gym at a time when people are serious just so that i'm surrounded by that we are a, we are a product very much of our environment okay i'm aware that my that my time is up and our time together is up as well I'm available to answer your questions. Please keep sending me those DMs. Um food food really can be can be something that that we can redefine our relationship with. It's something we're going to have to do one way or the other till the day we die. I will say let's get wiser than 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 what the scarcity mindset what what the world is marketing at us uh one of the more disturbing images that has always stayed with me is from the movie wall-e it's it's a pixar animated movie where it's it's a dystopian sort of future that is where the world is run by robots and we human beings have become completely ineffectual and completely at the at the at the mercy of these robots we have no musculature we have no ability to do anything for ourselves we need constantly to be entertained fed nourished from the outside served on by the outside i will say to you be careful who you give the the keys of your happiness and your health to the more you create dependence on the world outside the more you'll need that and more and more of that um and and even all of that will be will be uh, a conditional happiness the more you retain the keys of your car of your happiness with yourself the more self sufficient you become the more you'll be able to enjoy all the beauties that the world has to offer i'll end with a line from the bhagavad gita it's it's like you will be you will be like a wave that you're the mighty ocean now because all this happiness is in you and your waves can 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 come to the shore but will retreat so you can touch all the wonderful objects of the world but not get attached to them you don't need them for your happiness you come back into the ocean of your infinite self so i hope uh, all of these have made sense in any way if you actually feel like some of these are challengeable i would love to hear from you as well because your brain's not going to take in anything that doesn't seem familiar to it or that seems antithetical to to your reality your narrative it's a great time to have a conversation and to really question what might and i'm not saying that i'm right the the truth could well lie somewhere in between right your truth or your reality Thank you everybody. My celebratory lunch today is one of my favorite meals. Um we'll try and speak about this without drooling. Uh rajma and rice. Again, we talked about how some proteins become so much more bioavailable when mixed with uh certain other foods. I've got a simple salad of cucumber, tomatoes, onions, no dressing, none needed for this one because there's already so much flavor. potatoes yes those demonic foods um these are just baby potatoes tempered with with uh, jeera and uh, turmeric and chili powder and one of my favorites which is an acquired taste is bitter gourd again this is a different preparation to last time and um i i used to actually tell my tell my boys when they were younger <laughs> that this was this was an animal and squid and things like that um Yeah no they didn't buy it then but I do notice they're a lot more curious about foods now than they were when they were then when they were much younger 
thank you so much everybody for joining me um i hope these have been helpful to you and um let's keep the conversation going let's keep up our love for food and enjoyment around it bon appetit have a wonderful day bye bye